Good morning, YouTube, Booktube, Johnny. It's been a couple of days since I made a video, and since I'm officially alone for six days, my wife left this morning to take a plane out to Seattle, Washington to visit our son. Josiah and his wife Hannah and our little granddaughter Marika and I can make videos anytime morning afternoon and evening if I so wish so I just got up uh, I got up around five o'clock this morning my wife left around four I didn't um, I said goodbye to her and then I went back to bed and then I was I was having this really weird dream about vampires, of all things. And I woke up at five, this terrible dream, fixed a big breakfast, and then I was sitting in the living room in the easy chair and I kept falling asleep so I went back to bed. And then I got up around nine and my wife called on my cell phone from Chicago. She has another hour to wait before she fly her plane leaves for Seattle. So at least she made it to Chicago. And so yeah, I wrote my diary this morning. I'm on pit. I wrote uh, this and then I start on page 49 for the year 2020 got my since it's the 16th and it is 9 30 here in Holland Michigan it is January the 16th it is a Thursday outside it is gray 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 dismal 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 damp cold Tomorrow it's supposed to rain and snow. We might get up to six inches of snow this weekend. But they don't really know. It might be snow rain. Uh, so when the 16th comes, I I start on my second folder. You know, I fill the first folder up from January, the first of every month until the 15th of every month. And then on the 16th, middle of the month, I go to the second folder. So I put this in my second folder. And so I've been writing in my diary. I've been reading my books. I've been just drifting. I have a congestion. I have some kind of chest cold. It's the last couple of weeks. And at least I'm not coughing a lot. It doesn't keep me awake all night. <clears throat> Just, I'm always coughing up all this gook. So in this video this morning, so I'm just rambling here. I got, uh, I have been showing the last couple of years that uh, Reformation Heritage Books in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is about 25 miles east of us, at Reform, at Purity Reform Theological Seminary, there's the bookstore of Reform Heritage Books, and they've been reprinting the works of William Perkins, who is considered the father of Puritanism. William Perkins, he lived from 1558 and he died in 1602. Uh, says here in the flap, uh, William Perkins earned a bachelor's degree in 1581, a master's degree in eight, 1584 from Christ College in Cambridge. During those student years, he joined up with the Lawrence Chatterton, who became his personal tutor and lifelong friend. Perkins and Chatterton met with Richard Greenham, Roger, Richard Rogers, and others in a spiritual brotherhood at Cambridge that espoused Puritan convictions. From 1584 into his death, Perkins served as lecturer or preacher at Great St. Andrew's Church, Cambridge, 
most influential pulpit across the street from Christ College. He also served as a teaching fellow at Christ College, catechized students at Corpus Christi College on Thursday afternoons, and worked as a spiritual counselor on Sunday afternoons. In these roles, Perkins influenced a generation of young students, including Richard Sibbs, John Cotton, John Preston, and William Ames. Thomas Goodwin wrote that when he entered Cambridge, six of his instructors who had sat under Perkins were still passing on his teaching. Ten years after Perkins' death, Cambridge was, was, was still, quote, filled with the discourse of the power of Mr. Williams' ministry, Goodman said. Perkins' influence as a theologian continued unabated after his death. This was due in large part, part of the widespread popularity of his writings. His writings were translated into several European languages and greatly influenced British and American Reformed theology. The Dutch for the Reformation and European Pietism. So they've been re reprinting the works of William Perkins and volume 8 came in uh, last last week. So volume 8 there's only two more volumes. There's volume 9 and 10 which Reformation Heritage Books plans to reprint this year. So then they'll complete the whole set. Now in volume 8 of the William Perkins works, you have Discourse on Conscience, three books on cases of conscience, treatise whether a man is in damnation or grace, a case of conscience, a grain of mustard seed. So this is volume 8. And then you have, starting with volume 1. Now volume 1 is uh, exegetical works. Exegetical works are from volume 1, volume 2, volume 3, and volume 4, which means that they take portions of, he takes portions of scripture and he does exegesis, he opens the text, he explains the text, and then he applies the text to the heart and mind of his readers or listeners. Like for example, in volume one is an exposition on Christ's Sermon on the Mount, which is in the Gospel of Matthew. So then you have volume two of exegetical works, which is a commentary on Galatians chapter three. Uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a commentary on the, the Epistle of Galatians. I think it's the whole thing. Yeah. So then you have volume three. Now these are all these are all chunkers. I mean, people in book two talk about big books. Well. This is a chunker, <laughs> if you read these. Uh, volume 3 is a commentary on Hebrews 11. And then you have volume 4, which uh, is exposition on the book, of, on the epistle of Jude, and the first three chapters of the Revelations in the New Testament. So then you have those. And then you go to volume five of William Perkins, which starts the doctrinal and polemic works. Chapter volume five of Perkins' works, foundation of Christian religion, exposition of the creed, exposition of the Lord's prayer. So you have that. And then you have volume six. Six, which is <clears throat> the Golden Chain. Now, the Golden Chain is a theological treatise, very famous of those who are the lovers of the old Puritan divines. For the Golden Chain, the manner and order of predestination, treatise on God's free grace and man's free will 
fruitful dialogue concerning the end of the world against Alexander Dixon and on memory. And then you have volume seven of William Perkins' works, which I, I showed a while back, the Reformed Catholic. He shows what the Protestant faith is in contrast to Catholicism. Uh, so he, and then you have volume eight came in the last week. So I've been reading that in the mornings. I've been reading the first treatise on conscience. On conscience. So, so that's William Pilkins works. You got this, you know, talk about chunkers. And you got these. So it's probably about over a couple thousand pages <laughs> of uh, text. But in all this, one thing about the Puritans, when they, they were mainly concerned with godly living, practical Christian living in the world. That it's not just all a head trip. Uh, all they believe that theology should lead should lead to godly living, uh, living out a godly life in the world, you know, in society, in how to live among people in your villages, in your towns, in your cities. Uh, they weren't just just and what they were concerned about was not only godly living but having a deep love for Jesus Christ that would live out in a life of service, of gratitude, thanksgiving, uh, loving your neighbor, you know, helping the poor, being concerned for the widow, for the, the orphans, the outcast, uh, being good stewards of the land, you know, of your cows. And, <laughs> and uh, because back in those days, a lot of people lived by being on you know, trading and shipping and fishing and wave, you know, seafaring, and so how to live according to the pattern set forth in the Bible, which is a life that is very practical. Sometimes I see in the YouTube world. Religion is is almost it's like a bunch of fairy tales. It's a bunch of mythology. It's a bunch of you just kind of uh, there's but Christianity is a ver is basically godly living, living out, living in Christian communities, uh, a life of worship, a life of praise, a life a life of you know missions, supporting hospitals, supporting Christian schools, supporting like here in, here in Holland, Michigan, you have you have so many ministries, so many churches are involved in just reaching out in their community to make it a better community, you know, providing furniture for people and food and counseling and drug addiction and alcoholism and providing job training. I mean, look at Goodwill, Salvation Army, which all, well, Salvation Army is a Christian organization. I don't know about Goodwill. So anyway, in, in talking about uh, last, last year, you talk about, I was thinking about doing a video about theological works that I got last year, 2019 that uh, I recommend. I just got these, the Selected Works of Robert Rolick, who is a very famous Scottish Puritan. And then I, I also got last year the Theological Practical Theology, Volumes 1 and 2 by Petrus Van Mantritz, which is translated out of Latin for the first time. And then they just been I've shown you uh, Herman Bavick's uh, Dogmatics. They they just translated volume one of his Reform Ethics, 
which I have really enjoyed reading. I've almost read half of this. And then you have Reform Systematic Theology, Volume 1 by Joel R. Beakey, who is a, a minister and the president in, and teaches at Puritan Reform Theological Seminary. This is his first volume of his dog, uh, Reform System and Theology. That he's, He also has a partner, Paul M. Smalley, Joe, Joe R. Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. So I, these are the kind of things I read as I'm going through my days, 2019 and now to, uh, the year 2020. So these are the kind of things I read in the, in the mornings into the afternoons. And once again, all this leads to a practical life. It's just not, I'm just sitting here and getting a bunch of my head just full of this intellectual stuff. No, it's, it's, lead, it's supposed to lead, well, it's a fruit of godly living, uh, being a good husband, a good grandfather, through living in the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't, I can't live out the Christian life of my own strength. I'd fail. But when you become a Christian, you're born again, you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of Christ lives you and lives out the Christian life, lives out the life of God in you. And that's why you're supposed to walk in the Spirit. You're supposed to not grieve the Spirit or quench the Spirit, but that you maintain intimacy with God through a life of worship and prayer, contemplation, meditation, reading the Bible, uh, not only reading the Bible, but living out the Bible in a life of godly obedience and the power of the Holy Spirit out of love for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And yeah, the Christianity is a life of love that we have been filled with the love of God and then that love expresses itself in practical, everyday living in this fallen, broken world. So yeah, so I got uh, volume 8 of the works of William Perkins. I've been reading those in the morning, writing in my diary, coughing up all this gunk, and now I can put all these in down the lower level. They've been on my desk in my main study. I have tons of stuff to show, used books, new books. I got books coming in the mail this week, and I need to get those down in the lower level, so I'll be making more videos. So, yeah, I hope you're having a good week, a good reading week. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Uh, I hope that, uh, that, you all, I could, you know, that you're all doing well. Like I said, I got this congestion. And uh, so I'm alone until next Wednesday. My wife will be out in Seattle until next Wednesday. Today's a Thursday. Tomorrow morning I go to the book nook. I'll probably make a video tonight. Maybe I'll probably make a, make a video every day until my wife gets back, until I have something to say. So I'll stop my rambling and I'll sign off. Until next time, bye.